we can draw an energy diagram for reaction. So here's a simple reaction. One reactant A turns into one product B. Delta H for this reaction, let's say it's a positive 80 kilojoules. Delta H or delta E, those are the measurement of whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. And you already know that a positive value for delta H or delta E means the reaction is endothermic. Negative delta H means heat is released. That would be a negative 80 kilojoules, let's say. But in this particular reaction, A to B is endothermic, 80 kilojoules. That means the product B is 80 kilojoules higher in energy than the reactant A. Energy is plotted on the y-axis, and the extent of the reaction or the reaction progress is plotted on the x-axis. Any reaction always has a barrier that has to be overcome. That barrier is called the activation energy. The difference from the reactant A all the way to the top of this curve, that is called the activation energy, which is abbreviated EA. The activation energy is the minimum amount of energy a reactant needs to reach the product state. It's like rolling a ball up a hill. If you give a ball a little bit of energy, it'll go part way up the hill, but then it's going to roll back down and it will never go over the top of that hill. The activation energy, let's say that this activation energy is 200 kilojoules. The activation energy has to be a positive number. Delta H could be positive or it could be negative. If the reaction were exothermic between A and B, that would mean that B, the product, is at a lower energy than A, but there still is a barrier between the two. So we might have another reaction where the difference between A and B is 50 kilojoules, so A is 50 kilojoules higher, B is 50 kilojoules lower, but there still is an activation energy, and that activation energy must be a positive number, let's say it's 300 kilojoules. Whether it's endothermic or exothermic, the top of this curve is given a symbol like this, which looks like a not equal to sign. The very top of the curve is called the transition state, or it's also called the activated complex. So the transition state is really not the reactant A, it's not the product B, it's the transition in between those two states. So maybe the transition state represents a bond that hasn't been formed yet, but it also hasn't broken the old bond yet. From this diagram, we can calculate things like the reverse reaction. If B turns into A, we could calculate the activation energy for this reverse reaction. So the reverse reaction means the product B turns into the reactant A. Calculating the activation energy, we follow the same definition. The energy of the product B is 80 kilojoules higher than the reactant A. So what is the amount of energy it takes to reach the top of this curve if B starts 80 kilojoules higher, and in this case the activation energy would be less, it would be 120 kilojoules. Because it must be 120 kilojoules from B to the transition state if B started out 80 units higher than A.
we could calculate the activation energy for B turning into A for this exothermic reaction. For B to go all the way to the top of the curve, it has to get 300 kilojoules from the energy of A, and for B to get up to this value, it would take 50 kilojoules. So the activation energy would be 350 kilojoules. Whether the reaction is endo or exothermic, we can also speed up the reaction if we add a catalyst. So here's an exothermic reaction. The barrier that has to be overcome is from A to the top of the curve. But if we add a catalyst to this reaction, the catalyst will speed up the reaction by providing another pathway. The other pathway has a lower barrier. And so the starting point A is exactly the same. The end point B is exactly the same. The difference is we get a much smaller barrier with the catalyst. So the red line represents the activation energy without a catalyst. And we have a different transition state. We have a much lower barrier, a much smaller activation energy if we have a catalyzed reaction.